Hi there, I'm Ren. I also go by Kakashi Copycat Coon on Instagram and DeviantArt, or Insomnia Arts on Tumblr if that's your cup of tea. I've been a big fan of Saint Seiya for a long time, and cosplaying from it for almost 10 years now, so I thought I'd share what I've learned with everyone else. I'm not by any means a professional, and I'm even worse at teaching than I am at making videos, so uh, bear with me guys. Today I'm going to walk you through the process for making Bellerophon Alice's Tiara from the new and ongoing Rerise of Poseidon manga. Bellerophon is a manga-only villain character from the Rerise of Poseidon spin-off. He's one of the goddess Nemesis's spirits and the first enemy to fight Poseidon's Marina generals. I fell in love with this design instantly. Totally not because he looks like my boy Frody. Nope, nope, not at all because of that. It's just got a lovely pale blue, silver, and gold color scheme with hints of a deep, richer blue. Plus, wings. I've been wanting to make some armor wings for a while, so I'm gonna go all in for this one. In this video, I'll just be making his tiara, but if the people make it known through comments here and on my Instagram, I may put up the entire cosplay process for Bellerophon. We'll just see how it goes. So, for this project, I'll be making my tiara out of aluminum sheet metal, because that's what I like and I'm comfortable with, but it can also be done with foam that you can either paint or cover with fabric. Before I decided to film this, I broke down the costume, gathered materials, made my undersuit, and bought some silver boots. I also made up the pattern for this, though I recommend you do better measuring than me, because although I didn't film it, at the end I had to make an extender because I made it too small to fit over my wig. So this is roughly a 360 of what the tiara looks like on his head. Getting the colors right was kind of tough, because he has this little tail thing on the back of his head, and we have no clue what color it is, because our only full color picture of him is this front view. So. I improvised and made it match with the wings and the V-shaped thing on the front of his tiara. So with that out of the way, I figured out how many pieces I would need, and what shapes, to make this work. Usually my tiaras don't have a back piece, and that's where I made the mistake I mentioned earlier. So if I do this again, I'll make my headband pieces about an inch and a half longer each, for a better fit. In the end, you're going to need 8 pieces, 2 gold wings, 2 long silver headband pieces, your head circumference plus some, a blue diamond, a silver diamond, and a gold V-shape, and the gold tail. To make the headband pattern piece, make a strip of paper that's half your head circumference plus as much as you need for it to fit over your wig. By as wide as your highest point and lowest point. For me, I made the strip about three and a half inches wide. Then I sketched out the bends and dips it has across the center so that the high points align with the top of my wide strip and the low points with the bottom. Then I trimmed it to about an inch and a half thick all together, and I added a little slit at the back so that the tiara could slot together instead of being a solid ring. Once that part was done, I pinned the pattern to a wig head and sketched all the other pieces to size and cleaned them up by folding them and trimming them to make sure they were symmetrical. Once I got the patterns how I wanted, I traced them onto some aluminum sheet metal. The type of aluminum doesn't really matter much, just make sure it's thin enough that you can easily bend it into shape, but not so thin that it snaps after only bending it a couple of times. I live in a farming community, so a yard square sheet costs me around 10 bucks, but I think you can get the same at Menards for like 30 if you have no other options. I'm the kind of person that gets irritated when people ask me if I need help, so early on in my armor making, a friend of mine kept suggesting that he cut my pieces with power tools and I got all huffy and did it by hand of spite, and it's too late for me to change, so I'll be using some tin snips, which are like heavy duty scissors made for metal to cut out all my pieces, but if you have tools, do that, because this can leave blisters on your hands, and it takes forever. Once you have them all cut out, you'll need to grind or sand all your rough edges smooth. This is going to be against your face and ears, and you really don't want to cut yourself every time you wear it, so you need to smooth it out. If you have a Dremel tool, I recommend using that, but I don't, so I'm using a rat tail file, which is basically a textured metal stick that can sand the edges the way sandpaper does.
Once you have all your pieces adequately sanded, it's time to engrave your detail lines. You can also do this with a Dremel, but if you don't have one, you can use a small awl or a tiny screwdriver. I use the awl to get the basic lines in and then widen them and smooth them out with the screwdriver because it has a nice flat edge. You don't want to scratch this too deep, but you want it deep enough that a layer of spray paint won't fill it in. Kind of go by feel. You should be able to follow your lines with a finger easily, even with your eyes closed. Once everything is sanded, engraved, etc., it's time to paint it. First, you're going to wipe it down with some rubbing alcohol. This will get rid of both the marker or whatever you use to draw your lines and any oils left by your hands during the process. After that, you're going to separate your pieces by color. I split mine up into gold, blue, and unpainted, which is the silver. If you want to paint your silver pieces, feel free, but I don't see it as necessary since the aluminum already has a nice shine to it. Then you just take it outside and spray it paint it like you would any other cosplay prop. The gold went really smooth for me. The blue is where I ran into some problems. Normally, I would use this blue spray tint so the metallic sheen could be seen underneath. But I guess mine was old because it did this. So it was time for plan B, a technique I used in my gauntlet for my Koha cosplay. I took pieces from a blue mylar balloon and some spray glue, and I sprayed the metal piece and covered it up. But it still sucked. It was all wrinkly and gross and not at all how I wanted it to be. Then I tried nail polish and hated how every color of nail polish I had looked on the aluminum. So finally, I settled on covering it with the same fabric I've decided to use on the rest of my armor, which I should have done from the beginning for a more cohesive look, but I was really hoping not to have to cut into my fabric just yet, but anyway, it worked. Once that disaster was all settled, it was time for assembly. For this, you're gonna need a glue that works on metal, and no, your basic hot glue or super glue won't work. Take it from someone who's tried them both previously and been incredibly disappointed when it didn't work. Especially the super glue, because I was attempting an Atcon repair on Brody. Anyway, I recommend Goop brand Marine Contact Adhesive. It dries clear and is meant to bond fiberglass, glass, metal, all with a waterproof seal. So, you're going to bend both your diamond pieces at the center so they fit your forehead well, but make it a little bit more dramatic so it looks good with your wig. Once it's posed the way you like, add glue to both the back side of your blue diamond and the front of the silver one where the blue one will be sitting. Then, you attach the silver headband pieces. I sincerely recommend getting most of the bending done before you glue them in place because it'll be less likely to pop apart if you don't have to make a bunch of adjustments to it after it's together. Then, clamp those bad boys together for 24 hours. Waiting sucks, but you gotta do it or it won't stay put. The next day, you attach your gold V after putting a similar bend into it. And next is time for the tail. Bend the little nub at the top so it hooks over the back of one of your headband pieces, and then kind of bend it into a bit of a rounded shape so it looks like this. Once you've got a bend to shape, apply glue to the inside of the bended nub and a little bit to the back of the headband piece you're going to apply it to. Choose the headband piece carefully because this will become the piece that has to sit on the outside when you slot it together. Glue that thing in place, clamp it, and wait. Then it's time for the wings, which is just lather, rinse, repeat. Glue, clamp, wait. Finally, you're done. Please ignore my roughly done wig. He went through a bit of hell getting that tiara on there because these pictures are from before I added my little extender I talked about in the beginning. But in this video of it on my head, I've already added it, and it looks much, much better. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, let me know either in the comments below or on my Instagram profile, Kakashi Copycat Coon. If it goes well, I'll film more of my Bellerophon progress and upload it in a similar way. I also plan to build Kraken Isaac this year, and I'm pretty open in my Insta Story archives on how I've built almost all of my other Saint Seiya armors. If video format isn't your thing, or you just want to keep up, feel free to give me a follow. Until next time!